Okay, Brie Tone Chemgen, I'm looking for who can get the biggest change in temperature in their water from burning a marshmallow. On your marks, get sets, go! Off to a riveting start. Jen looks like she's pretty experienced. I'm not so sure what Brito's doing over here. I'm never so sure what Brito's doing. Brito, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've got going on? I'm just going to win. That's all I care about. I don't know your lab quest. Don't try and make me with technology. Our starting temperatures. Mine is 28.1. Your starting temperature is 27.7. Please record it on your board. That's your initial temperature. T initial equals 28.1. All right. Someone needs to tell us when to go. Mark said go. Come on, who's gonna make it to the final three? This is a fire building competition. Brito has left the competition. Not sure what's up with that. Brito comes back <gasps> running. What is that, a blowtorch? Hey, watch out for Ladies and gentlemen, this is unprecedented. <laughs> no fair, no fair. He is Oh, look at that. It smells kind of toasty over here. I think we should have done this indoors. It hears. Who do you think's gonna win now? I'm just curious, who, who's, who's your money on? Kim Jen is at 29.6 degrees. Brito is really pulling away with this competition. He's at 37.6 degrees Celsius. Here, I'm just gonna help Brito. Rita, uh, do you have any any words you would like to share with the audience? Domination. The word of the day is domination. So, reading right now, folks, Kem Jen's just under 30 degrees Celsius. Brito is pulling away from her. He's now at 43.5 degrees Celsius. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a blowout. No pun intended. Oh. Mine's burning, mine's burning. Is she still in this? She might be. We take playing with fire to the next level over here. Just imagine, I normally do this with 15 stations. My classroom smells delicious afterwards. Frito so is go. killing and it. do this in the garage where there's no wind. Almost at 60 degrees Celsius, ChemJet is stuck in the 30s still. This would be a good problem to have if it were age. Oh, thank you. The word of the day, domination. I don't know if we're really testing the calories in domination. a marshmallow or how much energy you have in your container there. So 57.1, so your delta T is almost 20 degrees. Sadly, I shall concede defeat. Brito had better equipment. Okay, so we're going to subtract those two numbers. And you have 19.4 is your delta T. Okay, so now you're going to say the mass. Temperature initial, temperature final. 
the delta T, so the change in temperature is 19.4 degrees Celsius. So now you're gonna say the mass is 80, so you're gonna say 80 times 4.2. Sure. times 19.4 and then your number of joules of heat that you transferred to your water was 6518.4 and you not only transferred heat to the water you also transferred heat to your cam okay guys so the amount of heat transferred from the burning marshmallow to the water is 6518.4 joules but we didn't just heat up the water we also heated up the can so the mass of the can is 15 grams i measured it the specific heat of aluminum which is what the can is made up of is 0.9 joules per gram per degree celsius so delta h for the can is mass 15 times c 0.9 times the change in temperature. The change in temperature for both is the same because the water's in the can and the, the heat is shared equally. And now you have 261.9 joules of heat transferred to the can. We add them together. That means those two marshmallows plus a rather massive propane torch, which was added to the experiment unbeknownst to me had a transfer of heat of 6,780.3 joules. And um, in a minute, I'll do the math with you and we'll convert to calories and see if we're anywhere in the realm of reasonableness for the calories in a marshmallow. Good job, Brito, even though, I don't know if I should say you cheated or you saved the experiment. What do you think, Lauren? I brought a torch to a marshmallow fight. <laughs> Good job, nice work. Okay, folks, so we just saw a somewhat dubious account of burning a marshmallow to create a change in temperature in water. Now, our temperature change in water, our can, was what we would call a calorimeter. This here is an actual calorimeter. This is called a bomb calorimeter. Now, a bomb calorimeter is where you would put the marshmallow in. So the marshmallow would go right here and then it would be ignited. There's the ignition wires. And then all of it would burn up, every last little bit of it. And because this thing is insulated, the temperature is transferred to the water. The temperature change is transferred to the water with very minimal loss of heat. And then that temperature, that delta T that you're able to calculate is way more accurate than the stuff Brito and I had going on outside with a propane torch and lighters. I always tell my students when we do this lab that we are going to get a terrible percent error. But the point isn't about getting a reasonable result in this lab. The point is understanding the concept of how we use heat transferred to calculate calories in something. If we had ourselves a fancy bomb calorimeter like this, we might actually get really good results. But where's the fun in that? There's just something awesome about taking a marshmallow and lighting it in a classroom and burning it beneath a Coke can that makes everybody extremely happy. But let's go ahead and look at the results that we got and talk about it. We got a total of 6,780.3 joules of heat transferred from our marshmallow, or was it from the propane torch, to the Coke can. Obviously, the Coke can wasn't insulated, so tons and tons of heat were lost to the outside. So instead of this, we had this. So there's tons of sources of error. First of all, is the marshmallow burning directly below it? No, heat is being lost this way. Is the Coke can insulated? No, I did try to insulate a Coke can once. And let's just say that Coke koozies, when they burn, make a really, really bad smell. We're gonna lose tons of heat. So there's all kinds of inherent error in this experiment. But of the 6,780.3 joules, 
how would we convert that to calories? When we divide this by a thousand, we get six point seven eight oh three kilojoules. And then to go from kilojoules to calories, you've got to divide by 4.2. There are 4.2 kilojoules in one calorie. And when we divide 6.7803 by 4.2, I'm going to pause the video for four seconds while you do the work. You get approximately 1.61 food calories. Now notice I used a capital C. A food calorie is like a kilocalorie, but when we have calories on our candy bars or whatever written there, that is a food calorie and it's actually a thousand little calories. So folks, in no perfect world does a marshmallow have 1.61 calories. And in fact, we burned two calories uh, two marshmallows, so really we came up with a value of 0.81 per marshmallow, which is horrific because if you look on the package, it says there's 100 calories per four. Anyway, that equals 25 calories per marshmallow, and we got the egregious number of 0.81. So that's a horrific percent error. But this is the one lab where I tell my students, it's okay, we're gonna get a terrible percent error. Why? Because the purpose of the lab is I want students to get used to learning how to use this formula. Change in heat equals mass times C. C is called the specific heat times delta T. So what is this C value? C value is specific heat and all substances have varying amount of specific heats. Specific heat is the amount of heat it takes to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. So the units of specific heat is joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. See how the units are in the definition. Specific heat is the amount of heat it takes to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Now I have some specific heat tables uh, values right here. This is the value that we're going to use and you're like well this is joules over gram Kelvin. Well the degree Celsius value folks is a delta T. So if you have delta T in Kelvin or delta T in Celsius because the increments are the same between them, the value, the absolute value is going to be the same. So this is one time when if you don't convert to Kelvin, it won't affect your answer. Okay, so we burned um, our can, we burned beneath a can. Our can has a specific heat of 0.9, and then we burned it in water, and water has a specific heat of 4.186, or we used 4.2. So think about this. It takes a whopping amount of heat to change one gram of water one degree Celsius. It takes much less heat to change aluminum by one degree Celsius. What does that mean? That means, folks, if you go down an aluminum slide in the summertime, it's going to be hot and it's going to burn you. When I was a kid, slides were made of metal. So you learned you wore long pants to the park where you didn't go down a slide in the sunshine. However, those slides were fast, man. We would get on the slide and we would fly off and then we would mark in the dirt because we didn't have mulch, I guess, back then. I don't know. It was a long time ago, right? And we would mark in the dirt how far we landed. Now slides are plastic. They have a lower specific heat so they don't get as hot in the sun, but they're so slow I mean, you get stuck going down. Anyway, so the two specific heat values we used was the 4.2 for water and the 0.9 for aluminum. Then what we did is we went ahead and plugged it into our formula, delta H equals MC delta T. The whole point of this was to use this formula here to study the transfer of heat from one object to another. 
To finish up our conversation about specific heat, I want you to think how water affects the temperature of various places. Here's the island of England. Here's the United Kingdom. Here's London. And um, London is pretty temperate considering how high its latitude is. Look. If you went here in Canada during the same time of year as you were here in England, which place would be tons colder? Why Canada, of course. They're covered in ice and snow. So why is the United Kingdom much more temperate? It's because it's surrounded by a body of water and the body of water keeps it more temperate. Why? Because the high specific heat of water prevents rapid fluctuations in temperature.